A couple of years ago, Great Wall Motors of China released a car called the Tank 300. It was a serious off-roader with a very reasonable price tag. It was a phenomenon. You have to pay extra at dealerships to get onto the wait list, and the wait list is more than six months long. Today, we have the Tank 500, which is the big brother of Tank 300. Let's see whether it's gonna be as popular as this little brother. Hi, my name is Fei Yan and you're watching Rev China. To look at the front of the car, first thing you see is this huge grille which is covered in chrome. And then you have the tank logo, which is also in chrome. You have body colored bumpers down here. And then you have another line of chrome here. Uh, on the two sides, you have the two daily running lights, which are LED. Do you think this looks like a robot with two square eyes and a big mouth here? On the side, all cars come with 20-inch alloy wheels as standard. However, the owner of this car has opted for these 17-inch wheels together with the 80 tires for a more sporty, more off-roading look. You have chrome trims. On the windows, you have chrome trims here, you have chrome luggage rails on top, and there's even more chrome at the bottom there. At the back of the car, there are even more chrome. There's a huge bar of chrome with tank written on it, and your registration is covered by a circle of chrome. There's more chrome on the low lift. The best thing about this car is this boot door. Now, it opens like this. It's soft closing, so you just need to do this and it closes automatically. You don't have to slam the door. So when you're just done your off-roading is covered by dust, you don't have to worry about getting it on you by slamming the door closed. The whole look of this car is a typical hardcore off-roader. This is quite a tall car and I'm only five foot four, but getting into the car, there's no hassle at all. If you have the key on you, and uh, once you're close to the door, these running boards pops out automatically. I can just step on like this. There's nothing futuristic or groundbreaking about the look, but let's have a look inside. I can guarantee you there's nothing old fashioned in there. I'm now in the driver's seat and all these seats are covered in Napa leather. They're very comfortable. You have these diamond quilted um, on these seats as well. And then you have the tank logo embroidered on the headrest. There are even chrome trims here. And now the seat is automatically adjusted and even the steering wheel is electrically adjusted as well. Everywhere you can see or touch are either covered by leather or soft and squeegee materials. There are loads of metallics in this car, right? These dials and buttons are covered in metallic. These buttons on the center console are in metallic. Even the vents of the air conditioning is covered in metallics. And also the side mirror controls and even the buttons hidden here are covered in metallic. The Infinity sound system is standard on all cars. And in the center console, you have this expensive looking crystal gear knob here. And on the side, you have loads of controls. There's your ventilated and heated seats. There's your auto start and stop, your parking sensor. And then on the other side, there are even more for the patterns, patterns aside, and also your three differential locks in here. Practicality wise, there's a large door bin on the side. There is a small cubby place on the side here, which you can play your um, coins in here. Underneath here, there is a wireless charging pad and under the armrest, there is a huge storage place. I can put my whole arm in there. If you slide this backwards, you can find two cup holders. This button controls your driving modes. You have your normal eco, comfort, and sport modes for your on-the-road driving. And there's also snow, uh, rough terrain, and also low-range gear modes that you can select from here. If you put it in auto, like I've just done, this car automatically adjusts the suspension and the gear settings according to the surface you drive on. In front of me is a large driver's display. I'm currently in the off-road mode. You can see your, the speed you're going, your RPM, the direction you're going, and also the slope that you're on. 
I can switch it back to the classic mode. I can switch this card here. For example, this is now showing the total running time and my fuel economy. I can switch it to the music, um, your phone connection, and then the mode change, and then uh, by just pressing this button here. There is a central touch large screen, which is crystal clear and very responsive. I'm currently in the sat nav, and then you can change it back to the car setting, and then your air conditioning here, your phone settings, and then your music as well. It's pretty much intuitive and very easy to use. You can basically um, control everything via voice control. I just need to call the car's name. Tanke, Tanke. 在呢。关上天窗。天窗关闭了。There is a camera in front of the driver, and you may wonder what it is. It's actually monitoring the driver's condition. So if you are tired and yawning all the time, the, this one is picked up, and then the car will alert you to keep you awake. I'm now in the second row. These seats are exactly the same as the front ones. They're very soft and supportive. It's lovely sitting in here. The front seat is in my normal driving position and I have tons of knee room and loads of headroom. I can properly stretch out and make myself comfortable. Um, these seats are a bit lean back, but you can make yourself upright a bit as well. But why would you? Now, there is a huge center armrest here. With the down, this car looks like a four seater, more of an executive feel. And uh, you can put your arm down here and there is a small screen down here, which is touch sensitive. It controls your ventilation and heating of the seat, your air conditioning, your music and other settings, which is pretty nice. There are two cup holders here as well. I'm now sitting in the mid row. Uh, this cushioning is still very soft and supportive. It's really comfortable, but the back here is a bit hard. So it's okay to sit three people at the back at the same time, but for longer journeys, people who sit in the middle may suffer a bit. Before we get onto the road, let's have a look under the, the bonnet. We have a three litre V6 that produces 354 horsepower and 500 Newton meters of torque. This engine, together with the nine speed automatic gearbox, are both developed by Great Wall Motors themselves. In the day and age where everyone is saying fully electric cars are the future, I think Petrolheads should thank the manufacturers like Great Wall by keeping this V6 alive. Now, as you know, even the Mercedes C63 is going to be replaced by a four cylinder engine. I'm currently driving on a busy city road. I have to say this driving position is very comfortable. Uh, the viewing angle outside is lovely and you have these two huge side mirrors that makes everything look crystal clear. You, you know what's coming up to you. Um, the steering wheel is quite heavy, but as this is a hardcore SUV, this is what to be ex expected as well. This is a turbocharged V6. But with the help of the 48 volt mild hybrid system, you don't really feel much of a turbo lag. From 1,500 RPM, the power just keeps giving and you just feel so confident on your right foot. Once you put your foot down, it goes. This car weighs two and a half ton, basically as much as a house. But on the road, you don't really feel it's that heavy. It's quite agile for a car of this size. The suspension, is really soft and supportive. It gets rid of most of the bumps and potholes on the road. Right, this car is 4.8 meters long, but you can live with it because the turning circle of this car is quite decent. Uh, for city driving, it is definitely doable to do maneuvers and U-turns and etc. On the screen here is the new Land Cruiser 300. Does it look familiar? Right, I think it looks quite similar to the car we have here, the Tank 500. Well, the Land Cruiser 300 has a 3.5 liter V6, uh, which produces 415 horsepower and 500 Newton meters of torque. It is slightly more powerful than the Tank 500. The Tank 500 only costs 
335,000 RMB, which is about 50,000 US dollars, and the Land Cruiser costs 90,000 US dollars. Has better cabin, better seats, better infotainment system, and with the same level of off-roading capacity, if you had the choice, which one would you go for?